I'm not gonna lie, Genji has been struggling. If it's the stun meta or the meta shifting to Genji counters, he's just not as good as he used to be. But for those of you sticking it out, I'm going to bring you the top seven tips to playing Genji the right way in this meta. My name is Nate and welcome to Blizzard Guides. We all know that Genji is just getting outshined by Doomfist and other picks, but he still does see a lot of play as just a popular character as he is. I know that a lot of you out there, especially you support mains, don't want to see him popping up more, which I get, but this isn't me trying to get you guys all to switch over to be Genji mains. I'm just trying to help those of you who are still sticking to your favorite hero, even in the darkest of times. I'm going to give you general advice as well as some niche stuff so that you can keep doing your best. Also, really quick, I want to give a shout out to our Twitter, at Blizzard underscore guides where you can tweet us questions or check out our content. But with that said, let's hop into this video. At number 7, you just gotta use your dash completely differently than you used to. This is actually something that I've really noticed more and more. You just can't use dash as an engagement tool like you used to. Before, what a Genji would do is he would dash in, right click a bunch, deflect when he needed to, and then he would be fine and get kills. However, now in the stun meta, you can't exactly do that, as the moment that you get into the fight, you'll be stunned, frozen, hacked, shattered, and dead. This happens because the tank meta has largely shifted from being divey heroes to just being more ground based, which doesn't exactly favor Genji. What you need to do now is you have to have the element of surprise to get in or the map geometry and then keep dash as an escape and only use it whenever you need to get out of the fight. If you start climbing around the map and then doing damage with right clicks and making sure that you either use dash to get the kill so you get the reset or save dash altogether, you're not going to get brutally murdered by the enemy Brigida. Get out of here! If you get stunned, you can just dash right away and right after and Brig won't have the window to kill you unless she uses her combo which isn't exactly always available. The only reason that you would dash in is if you know for a fact that there isn't a stun lying around the corner. If there isn't, you're free to do your normal dash, right click stuff, and get kills as such, but however, if you're not actually sure, it's best to just go on a flank or at least position where you have the least pressure on you, and then go in without dashing. At number 6, your blades are far too predictable and you need to make sure that you're spacing well. A common complaint that I hear is that you're hopping on Genji, you dash up for a blade and you get the reset from casting ult, you dash in and suddenly you're solo grabbed, you've been stunned and the whole deal goes down. While you might expect me to say something bory like, well just like number 7, make sure that you save dash for escape, which actually might make some sense, but I'm going to disagree with my hypothetical self and tell you that he's a dummy. Rather, go in for the obvious dash and make sure you space properly. If you're in any tier less than masters, you're probably going to find that the majority of main healers don't have their brig pocketing them, much less the lower that you are in rank. So what you can do is carefully scout out where you're going to dash when you blade and then manipulate the brig stun or other enemies for that matter and force them to overcommit to you. Basically what I have in mind is that you dash into the main healer, force the brig to walk slightly towards you to maybe go for that stun, get the kill, dash out and then dash the next target while the brig is still walking over to the main healer. You have insane mobility when you're on get so if you go far back and blade and then dash up to the front line after the brig runs towards you and then get the flanker on your support afterwards you're going to get two to three kills quickly and put that brig out of position and maybe even get an enemy to commit a cc ability to you and miss what you have to do is rather than being able to blindly dash in and get kills really take a good look at the enemy position and team comp and figure out the threats and then dash in and stick to your plan you're still welcome to do the dash up in the air and be as obvious as you'd like but you have to have have way more of a plan than you used to. It's okay to take yourself semi out of the fight so that you can think clearly about it. If you're going to do that, you're going to get a big blade. And by big blade, I mean two to three kills. You don't have to get four plus kills per blade. An average of two kills per blade is actually really, really good. At number 5, you just can't flank too aggressively anymore. This might seem like I'm counteracting the first thing I said, which is kind of true, but I, I mean this in a different manner. Anyway, what you need to make sure that you do is that you're just staying with your tanks if you don't have to be on a flank. Some Genjis I've seen just can't help but be deep in the enemy's backline attempting to get place made or that just haven't seen their teams in weeks. You gotta chill out and you gotta play with your team when they need you. You gotta play more like a team player now in Genji, which is going to be hard, no doubt.
I mean, seriously, you don't have to be in that deep if you want to get kills. What you can do instead is stay behind your Rhine shield, deflect damage in front of him when his shield is low, and then spot out the out of position targets to the sides and go for them, and then dash back to your team and repeat. You can use your deflect to protect your supports and just do bulk damage when there aren't any out of position picks for you to grab. It's not that hard to do, but it is certainly a huge change in playstyle for some people. At number 4, you're blading alone without any help from your team. This one is going to be a bit harder to pull off, no lie, just because sometimes teammates suck and they seem to have misplaced both their mic and eardrums. But with that said, for those games that you actually get people the capacity to listen to basic calls, combo your ults. If you're not comboing, you're wasting your blade. Even though Zarya isn't really played all that much, you can still have some huge nasty combos with other heroes. Your supports are the most notable, every single support can be comboed with Genji's ult. Anna is seen the most currently, so I'll use her for an example. Just Nanoblade, that's it, stop wasting your blade, you can't get big ones like you used to if the enemy has a shred of skill, since CC is just such a big thing now. You need resources like Nano, Valk, Sound Barrier, etc. If it's not your support that you can combo with, get your tanks to go in with you, or let's say you have a Hammond, get them to pile drive with you, or maybe get your Rhine to shatter. If you can wait, also wait. Don't just use blade because your Anna is 80% ult away, you can see in the tab menu how close she is, check that before you actually ult. If she's close, just wait for her and make sure you can combo it. It's pretty easy and it's something that really helps a lot, but again, with that said, that's only if you have a communicating team. I totally understand if nobody's in voice, you're not going to be able to do this. This doesn't always work out, so your mileage may vary. At number 3, it's a smaller one, but you gotta focus on getting value out of deflect more so than before, and you have to be careful when you deflect. Stuns go through deflect, even if it's a skill shot like McCree, you're not as invincible as you used to be when you deflect. So when you do go for it, just make sure that you're not just using it to protect yourself, but it's also being used so that you put pressure on the enemy so that they back up. And now with that said, you can still use it to protect yourself, but be mindful of it. The way that you can look at it is that when a Ryan with a team behind him pushes up with shield held and he's speeding towards you, you normally back up, right? Similarly, if a Genji is playing aggressive and you fire strike him because you're on Ryan and then he deflects it at you, he's forcing you back a bit by putting pressure on you, even if the fire strike cuts your health by a fifth. It's not that much, but it's enough to force you to stop playing aggressive. Use deflect as a tool to put pressure, but keep in mind that you can get stunned out of it and it takes you semi out of the fight for a period of time. If there's a break or a doom or something like that, under no circumstances are you to deflect, since that does take you out of the fight for 2 seconds and it gives the enemy a 2 second window to stun you and kill you. So just be very careful of that. Deflect, like I said, isn't an invincibility tool, but it is still useful. Like you've probably noticed, doing stuff on Genji is just much harder, which is the point of the video, so you're going to have to be way more thoughtful when it comes to your ability usage, and you're not going to get away with stuff that you normally could. At number 2, you gotta know your counters. If you're getting farmed on Genji because their entire comp is surrounded by CC, there's no reason to stick on Genji. Being self-aware and getting off Genji when you can is going to help you win games in the long run. I know that the point of the video is how to play Genji in this new meta, but like with other heroes, you can't just stick with Genji for the whole match anymore. Think of it like Farah is. She can be played super well and be super OP when she's not being countered or focused, but the moment that she is, she becomes worthless. Genji is kind of in a similar spot now. You can't play him the whole match if the enemy team really starts shutting you down. The way that you know it's time to switch is if you're just not finding picks or you can't get into the fight without getting some severe pressure on you. Granted, that's kinda how this meta feels either way, but what I mean is if it feels like the enemy's Winston, Brigida, Sombra, Doomfist, or whatever is just everywhere and constantly yoinking your life right from under your nose, you gotta stop playing Genji. Just be mindful of your value on the team and know when to switch if it's not working out. Nobody likes unreliable teammates, so just keep that in mind. And finally, at number one, you can build ult super fast now, like crazy ridiculous one blade per fight kind of stuff. As you may have noticed, Winston Diva doesn't get played as much anymore, and the meta is kind of really favoring Reinhardt as a main tank, with Diva sprinkled in here and there, but the majority of tank players are playing low mobile tanks. Because of that, you can stay indefinitely in your backline, spamming shurikens and getting ult quickly. If you stay with your tanks and team and just spam constantly, building ult off the enemy tanks while you're not looking for kills can average you 
a one blade every other fight, if not every fight. You don't really get the kind of pressure that you used to, nor does the enemy really have the resources to block it effectively, so if the enemy doesn't have a dedicated always up shield, you can just spam the tanks, or you can go off to the sides of the enemy and spam at a distance if they have Rhine, doing the aforementioned tips so that you don't actually get caught out by some CC flank buster. By doing so, you not only get damage out, but you're constantly watching the enemy tanks, and you can see whether there is an enemy squishy that doesn't have an escape that is out of position, which you can then go in and kill. If you really focus on building blades fast, you can use the blade tips from earlier so that you can effectively dodge all CC and pick up enough kills per fight and keep the ult economy rolling from your team healthy. And furthermore, just spam as much as you can. This meta is really CC dedicated and that means that spam is a really good way to effectively counter the CC since the CC in this game only works from a close range. Genji's shurikens don't have damage fall off, which means you can be as far back as you want, uh, I mean reasonably, and spam and then just get ult charged from a distance, which is really smart on Genji, so focus on spamming and then spamming so that you can build ult. It'll allow you to just have a better overview of the fight, which is why this is at number 1. Anyway, I hope this guide was helpful. If it was, let me know what your favorite tip was, why it was your favorite tip, and also drop a like so that I can keep making these guides as good as I can, and that they're just constantly improving. If you didn't like the guide, drop a comment telling me why, and be as harsh as you want. If you're constructive, I'll make changes to the videos so that they can be even better. If you've got any specific questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up on Discord, Instagram, or Twitter, and I'll be sure to reply to you so that you get the help that you need. If you want more of our content, get subscribed if you aren't already, and hit that bell icon so that you're never missing out on our uploads. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. My name is Nate, and this was Blizzard Guides.